if anybody has any prayer requests, put it in the comment section and I'll pray over it. This message is on Thaddeus, also known as Jude or Judas, not to be confused with Judas Iscariot. He was the son of Mary and Joseph, the half-brother of James, the brother of James and half-brother of Jesus what I meant to say, not half-brother of James, but brother of James, half-brother of Jesus. He was the author of the book of Jude. Thaddeus was one of the twelve whom Jesus gave authority to heal the sick, raise the dead, and cast out demons. Matthew chapter 10. Starting at verse 1. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out, and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. The first, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the publican, which was a tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus, and Labius, whose surname was Thaddeus. Simon the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely you have received. Freely give. I want to stop right there for a second. There's a lot of people today... They won't sell the gift of God. But the gift of God is not for sale. Verse 9. Provide neither gold, nor silver, nor brass in your purses, nor script for your journey. Neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves. For the workman is worthy of his mate. And into whatsoever city or town you shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till you go thence. And when you come into a house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you 
nor hear your words when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. I won't stop right there for a minute. He did not mean to do that literally, but symbolically. Other words, don't let what they've done stop you. He didn't mean literally shake the dust out, for that would be obscene. Verse 15. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents, and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And you shall be brought up, brought before governors and kings for my sake, for testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. For it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which spake us in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child. And the children shall rise up against their parents, and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. For he, endures, he that endures to the end shall be saved. I won't stop right there for a minute. There's a lot of people today that teach once saved, always saved. But that verse clearly says, He that endures to the end shall be saved. It is not who starts the race. It is who finishes it. Verse 23. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciples is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master, and the servant as his lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Remember how they called Jesus Beelzebub. And I won't stop right there for a minute. The time is coming upon us when we're going to face some severe persecution. And we've got to be ready to withstand when that day comes. Like I was saying earlier about how they say, once saved, always saved. 
And I've had people tell me, they say, well, if you're saved and you take the mark of the beast, you'll still get to heaven. No, it don't work that way. Because you have to endure to the end to be saved. Verse 26. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light, and what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetop. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a fathering? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs of your head are n all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore. Ye are of more value than many sparrows. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. For whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. I want to stop right there for a minute because there are many today they have found God But they won't talk to anybody about God. They're ashamed of Him. But if we are ashamed of Him, He will be ashamed of us. Verse 33. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that love a son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. If I'm not mistaken, if we get killed for the name of Jesus, if I'm not mistaken, that guarantees we get to heaven. But if we deny Jesus, that guarantees we go to hell.
verse 40. He that receiveth you receives me. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. He that receiveth the prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. That was what Jesus told the disciples when he first chose them. That that I just read. When Jesus was arrested, Thaddeus as well as most of the other disciples left him. After Jesus arose, Thaddeus as well as the other apostles began to testify Jesus had risen. For this reason, they were arrested, beaten, and commanded not to speak in the name of Jesus. But this did not stop them. Tradition says he preached in Judea, Samaria, Edom, Syria, Mesopotamia, which today these areas, Mesopotamia, are known as Iraq, Iran, Kuwait, and Turkey. He also preached in Libya according to, the, to tra tradition. Some have said he also preached in Barak, the capital of Lebanon, and Edessa, part of Turkey. It was Thaddeus who wrote the book of Jude. Tradition says he was beheaded. If it be the good Lord's will, I'll be back on here Monday evening. 